it simply should not be that Mr. Rogers has it right and a pastor and someone who leads the Bible Project, a well-known teacher, has it wrong or has at least blurred the lines on homosexuality. Why is it that in the majority of American churches, single people feel isolated and not included and alone? Because the dominant paradigm is get married and have kids. That's the pathway to a meaningful life. In his discussion about marriage and about singleness, most of what he said I could agree with. There is no call for people to leave singleness and to become married if they choose not to, especially if they do it for the Lord. But what he did was he equated being single, male, female, straight, with also being gay. Therein lies the problem. We try to blur the lines and give it or give the appearance that homosexuality is not a sin. It's okay. It's how God made you. But the Bible is clear when it says, do not call evil good and good evil. Woe to those who do so. And he didn't say you have to be clear and direct, even if you do it in a nonchalant fashion, even if you do it kind of smooth in a way that most people don't catch what you're saying, even if you step by step, drip by drip, moment by moment, normalize a sin, it's still calling evil good and good evil. And he says, woe to those that do that. And so we, we end up creating churches where people who are not married feel second class and where people who are gay feel even more ostracized because where do they fit, right? And so here, so here we're, we're right to it. In Jesus' view, in Jesus' view, there are multiple ways that a human can image God's love. One of them will be through marriage. But let's take seriously what Jesus said, and let's take seriously the fact that the same, hear this, that the same Jesus who said this is the same Jesus who said the meaning of human existence is to love God and to love your neighbor. Even that if it includes somebody that you don't like or that you disagree with. And it's the same Jesus who loved every single one of us despite our flaws and our failures, and he gave himself for us. And so with this Jesus, whether you're married, whether you're divorced, whether you're straight, or whether you're gay, there is no shame. And it's that right there that where you throw in gay along with being married or single, straight or gay, that's the issue because now you are making all of them sort of synonymous. With this Jesus. In Messiah Jesus, there is no male or female, no slave or free, no Jew or non-Jew, no gay, no straight, just beautiful humans made in the image of God who are deeply flawed. And point of fact, Tim, the Lord did not give his life for you to be gay. You cannot be gay practicing, embracing homosexuality and still be a Christian. That just does not compute. Can you be someone who is struggling? Well, Paul mentions in Romans 7 that the good that he wants to do, he doesn't do. And the bad that he didn't want to stop and the bad that he wants to stop doing, he continues to do. It doesn't mean that he's always doing bad or that he never continues to do any good. No, but the point is there's a struggle. If a person is struggling with their sexuality, that's one thing. We can work with that because at least internally, that person is trying to move past the sin in their life, the attraction that is not from God, if that's what they're trying to do. But on the other hand, it's quite different if a person is trying to live as they say, as a Christian, while embracing this lifestyle that God has called an abomination, that God has called a sin. Because what's going to end up happening is you are going to lean more and value and cherish more your identity, the things that make you feel comfortable. The Lord and what he wants you to be, how he wants you to conform to him, how he wants you to be a new man, that's not comfortable. That's not something that people want to do. And so I would rather do what makes me comfortable, even if it brings more pain and hurt internally in the long run, even if it causes me to have suicidal thoughts and depression. But at least on the outside, I'll be accepted by the world. I'll be included while thinking, though, that God is going to accept me. But the fact is, and this is why these people are doing a grave disservice, God will not accept that. For Andy Stanley, I can applaud being welcoming and inviting to people who you believe need the Lord Jesus, but not at the expense of compromising his word. Andy Stanley has begun this trip and he's gone so far off to where one, he's even impugning certain aspects of scripture. But now this 
embrace of a certain culture, a certain community, the LGBTQ community, and then to insult everyone else as to say that they have more faith than we who are practicing Christians. How to get straight people as excited about serving and engaging as the gay men and women I know, we would have a volunteer backlog. So you don't think that there are straight Christians who are excited about serving? My question is this, how did you get your church? How, did, how do we even have a body today? There are many people who are excited and on fire, as we would say, and love the Lord who are trying to serve. Maybe if you can't get people at your church to serve, maybe that's not an issue with the people. Maybe it's an issue with leadership that cannot inspire people to be devoted to the God of the Bible. Maybe that's an issue with you. A gay person, when I say gay, men and women, okay, a gay person who still wants to attend church after the way the church has treated the gay community, I'm telling you, they have more faith than I do. They have more faith than a lot of you. To say they have more faith than a lot of us do, well, no, they couldn't be. Because if they had faith, period, whichever level of faith they would have, if they actually had faith, then what they would do is they would be believing in the Lord. They would have eliminated their own desires. Yes, it may be difficult, but their focus would have been him, trusting in him. And I can promise you this, maybe you disagree, Andy, but I can promise you this, that a person who has submitted themselves to the Lord, a person that's actually believing, has the Holy Spirit in them. And if that is the case, the Holy Spirit is removing, maybe not as quickly as some would like it, but he is removing all of these vile things that we have normally as human beings. And so to say that they have more faith, maybe the issue is they don't have faith, but they're just okay and comfortable in their sin at your church. A gay person who knows, you know what? I might not be accepted here, but I'm gonna try it anyway. What, have you ever done that as a straight person? Do you, where do you go that you're not sure you're gonna be accepted and you go over and over and over and over? Only your in-law's house. That's the only place you go where you know you're not completely accepted, but you go over and over and over and it's because you have to. But other than the in-laws, what environment do you continue to step foot in knowing at any moment you may feel ostracized? No place. Where can a Christian go? Where can a straight Christian go and not feel accepted in who he is? Well, how about at your church? At your church, he's made to feel less than apparently because he's not gay. He's not struggling because you just said he didn't have as much faith. I'm telling you, the gay men and women who grew up in church and the gay men and women who've come to faith in Christ as adults who want to participate in our church, oh my goodness. I know 1 Corinthians 6 and I know Leviticus and I know Romans 1. It's so interesting to talk about all that stuff, but just, oh my goodness, a gay man or woman who wants to worship their heavenly father who did not answer the cry of their heart when they were 12 and 13 and 14 and 15. God said no, and they still love God. We have some things to learn from a group of men and women who love Jesus that much and who wanna worship with us. And let's just be clear. A gay man or woman who wants to worship God is no longer a gay man or woman. And I'm wearing my Mr. Rogers shirt because how is it that he can identify the fact that boys are boys, girls are girls, boys cannot grow up to be boys, boys will grow up to be the daddies, girls will grow up to be the mommies, and having an appreciation for the body that God gave you. Boys are boys from the beginning, girls are girls right from the start. Everybody's fancy, everybody's fine, your body's fancy, and so is mine. Because sometimes children think that they might change. They might have to change after a while. And you know, we laugh about that now, but it's because we had that concern when we were little. Yeah, because you're really not sure, and you thought maybe you'd become a girl, or a, a girl would become a boy, right? Exactly. And it happens frequently out here. Why don't we teach that, Andy? Why don't we teach that, Tim Mackey? You guys are influencing a lot of people through the Bible Project, through North Point Church, as well as whoever else that you may interact with. Why not hold the standard that God has? Let that be it. And if no one wants to succumb to that, if no one wants to adhere to that, well, then fine. You've told them you want them. But if you present a different gospel, a gospel that allows them to stay in their sins and not be broken and torn over it, 
but also present the fact that there's a Jesus who came and died for that very sin and can make them whole. If you're not preaching that gospel, well, then woe to you.